Hey, I'm Ray Smichkowski, and I'll be teaching you what is a prompt, why prompts are important, and what prompts are, like what type of prompts there are. Um, a prompt is a specific form of assistance used get to give a child the correct skill needed to perform a task before they incorrectly learn a skill. For an example, walking them through step by step on how to make a bowl of cereal. First you get the bowl, then you put the cereal in, then you pour the milk. Then you add the spoon. Instead of getting the bowl, pouring the milk, and adding the cereal and spoon, since this ends up wasting milk, and limits the amount of cereal that you can put in the bowl. And let's be real, the cereal is the best part. Prompts are important um, because they interject when the child is incorrectly performing the skill, so that way they don't incorrectly chain things together and learn that skill. So that would be telling the child to clap their hands and they go and they rub their tummy and clap their hands before. If you've reinforced this, um, one time of them rubbing their hands and clapping, or rubbing their tummy and clapping their hands, reinforcing that would um, chain those two events together so you're putting in more effort to get the correct response rather than just directly going in and clapping their hands. So whenever you see a child going in to rub their tummy, you would automatically go in and uh, prompt to go and clap hands. Um, so that way they're not incorrectly chaining those two together. Um, so this um, provides the most direct way for them to acquire the skill so that way they can gain access to reinforcement quicker. Um, the prompts that are most often used from the Libby 2008 article, there are seven main prompt styles. I'll use the example that they used in the article of bu building a Lego model. Um, just because it's the easiest to explain. I'll go from the least intrusive prompt style to the most intrusive prompt style since that's what I'm most familiar with. However, I'll walk you through most to least at the end. So, there's my hierarchy ladder. Um, we have independent prompting, visual prompting, verbal prompting, gestural prompting, model prompting, partial physical, and full physical prompts. So, going down the ladder, it's least intrusive to most intrusive and then if we were to go uh, backwards up the ladder it would be full physical partial physical model gestural verbal visual and independent so um you start with the more intrusive and work your way to the least intrusive there's a bunch of different reasons why people go through pumps this way um a lot of people say that most to least intrusive is more effective however there's also that uh fear of kids becoming prompt dependent if you prompt this way because they're used to just you going through and clapping their hands or stuff rather than waiting them out. Um, there's also prompt delay, so that's usually where you wait two to three seconds before you go in and prompt them or prompt the kid. Uh, so that kind of gives them a latency to try and attempt to do something on their own before you go in and do a physical prompt. Um, so I'll start talking about independent, verbal, or visual, verbal, and I'll go down the list. So we have independent, or no prompt, and that's where the child can look at the model on the table, and they can build it independently with the help, without the helps, without the help that prompts provide. So that would be the Lego model being on the table, the kid can look at it and stack the Legos independently, um, and then obviously reinforcement would follow. Visual prompting is where there's directions written out for the child to read or follow in order to correctly make the Lego design. I like to think of this as the little direction packet that comes in the Legos um, with the pictures on it of where the Legos go with like, the little arrows showing you where to snap them in and stuff. Um, then you have verbal prompts, which are any help given verbally, for an example, telling the kid, put the green Lego on top of the black Lego. This can be a challenge to fade at times, so a lot of people try to avoid verbal prompts. Uh, then we have gestural prompting, which is any movement, a gesture towards the, or gesture towards the correct response. So, for an example, this would be tapping or pointing to where the Legos correctly connect to make the same as the model they are displaying. Or, for an example, if you have a kid doing an LRFFC program where there's visual cards and you have to say a cow says and then they have to point to the cow and go moo um, you would 
a gesture or prompt would be you pointing to that card to aid in them getting that correct response. Um, model prompting is where the technician performs a task and the student has to copy them. An example of this would be a technician putting the green Lego on top of the black Lego, removing it and giving it to the child to try it themselves. Model prompting can also be um, a code base, so whenever you make those mouth movements, those are models for the client to pick up on. Um, any type of motor imitation could be model prompted. Um, really, honestly, anything can be model prompted. You're drawing letters, um, tracing, things of that nature. Then you have the physical prompts. So these are touching the child to get them to perform the task. There's partial physical and full physical prompts. Partial physicals are least intrusive prompts to do the task. So an example would be touching the child's elbows to get them to pick up the Legos to perform the task. Full physical is hand over hand to get the child to perform the task. So hand over hand, like teaching them grab the green Lego, grab the black Lego, and then smush them together. Um, so the Libby 2008 article mainly focused on independent, shadow, partial physical, full physical, and two second delay prompting. I kind of already talked about delayed prompting where um, the delay is a set amount of time before you go in and give the prompt. So that's usually about two to three seconds and then you would go in and prompt the skill. So like I said before, the least to most would be independent and then full physical would be the most and then to go the other way where you would go in the most intrusive prompt and then the least intrusive prompt would be a full physical, partial physical, model, gestural, verbal, visual, and independent. Um, I hope that you guys found that this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Have a great day.